Hello and welcome back everybody. Today I wanted to talk to you about and give you some of my first impressions on a plugin called Pixel Squid. It's something I've heard about a couple of times. I never really got around to getting it until very recently, but I'm glad I did. And if you haven't heard of Pixel Squid, you are soon because this is some incredible stuff and I'm going to be talking to you about it anyway. Now, in order to get this plugin, we got to go to pixelsquid.com. And once you're there, you've set yourself up a free account and then you download the plugin. Now, it is pretty straightforward. The easiest way to get this would be to have the Creative Cloud. It's not necessary, but it is the easiest. Once you have Creative Cloud, you have to go check in your preferences that under Creative Cloud your sync is on. Once you've got that, you can download this plugin from Pixel Squid and follow the instructions. It's really, really quick and easy. Once you've got that, you now have access to it in Photoshop. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, they do have a pretty thorough walkthrough on how to do a manual download of this, but believe me, it is worth the effort. Now, what you get from Pixel Squid is not just stock imagery. This is a large library of 3D objects that they have rendered and taken virtual photos of, 225 of each object in all different sorts of angles. So you have the ability so you have the ability to rotate them around to the exact angles you might need for your image. And besides just rotating a simple 3D object, you also have the ability and the option to download these objects as PSD layered objects so that you have access to all of the layers that go into creating this 3D lit and shadowed object. But let's stick with the simple for right now. I want to show you some of the content that they have. Over on the left here, it shows me they currently have 4,085 different objects, which is a little bit higher than it was when I checked it about an hour ago. So they are growing. Now, they have currently three collections, the Creative Workspace, Impact, and Apple Classic. In each of these, they have a variety of objects that have been pulled together to fit in the genre of these three collections. But if you don't want to go through all these random objects, down below, I, first of all, I see that they've got now 42 pages worth. We have a category section here. And you've got categories ranging from architecture all the way up to weaponry. Now going through some of these objects here, you have uh, so many different choices and some obscure and such random things you might not have expected to find, but all very useful to, for you to throw in any photorealistic image that you might come up with. They have uh, your random objects from oil rigs and diamonds and statues to some licensed objects. You'll find Mr. Potato Head in here. You'll also find uh, some objects from Sony and Apple, Nikon, Basically, a lot of different companies have uh, got together with Pixel Squid to allow their products to be rendered for us to use. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before. This is a free plugin, so it's it's wow enough. But the fact that it's free is pretty amazing. Now, outside of all of these objects, I don't want to go through 42 pages worth here. So once you choose an object. I'm going to pick my factory robot arm and on their object page you can click and drag the object around to 225 different possible angles to give it, uh, give it a look over and see if it's exactly what you might want to have. Once you have decided this is the object you want, you'll click this button here to add it to Photoshop and it will go into the plugin within Photoshop. You also have the option here to download it as the PSD file I did speak about earlier, the multi-layered uh, object. You'll have not only the shape of this robot arm, you'll have different layers that will contain the information for the lighting and the shadow, the color, atmosphere, depth, uh, all different things like that. It's pretty amazing and expert work. Now I can uh, go check out 
the objects that I've downloaded two different ways. One is the light box from the website itself. And I'll see for myself the uh, 13 objects I've downloaded into my plugin. I got uh, my factory robot. Uh, this this um, character called BB-8. It's from some weird space movie all my friends are kind of excited about. It. I don't know why, but, you know, they seem to like it. So we got different uh, phone types, a Wacom tablet, BMW, Nike, and then things that aren't licensed, of course, like the uh, animal cell, an ant, and a diving helmet. Just a few items I wanted to play with here. Now I could do the same thing I did earlier and check out these items individually, just like I did with the robot arm. But I want to move past this now. Let's get into Photoshop here. Now in your Photoshop area, to get access to your plugin, once uh, to activate it, it would be through the Windows menu, extensions, and pixel squid. You'll get this information as you do the download and follow their instructions. But once it's activated, it will appear nice and neatly in this section over here. Click on the icon and it opens up your little miniature library. And each thumbnail of, of all of the objects that I've got here laid out for me. Now currently they don't have any way to organize them into any sort of folders, files, or categories of your own. But I'm sure in the future they might do something like this as the library grows and the user base grows as well. Now for this background image, I want to put in, uh, let's say this BMW here. And it's as easy as just clicking on the miniature thumbnail. And I'm going to move it into place to around there. And on now this larger thumbnail, I can click and just like the website, drag it around until I find the angle that I want this BMW to be in. Release the mouse and it updates itself in place. I can also choose between low res or high res, depending on the quality of the background image it's going into. And instead of having to go back to the website, I can download this car at this angle as a PSD file straight from this little window. And once you have your car in place, or whatever object you choose to put in there, it is a smart object on its own layer with a transparent background. So you can adjust this layer like you would any other smart object. You can adjust its size, anything that you need. You can then rotate this anywhere you might want it to be. You can also add layer styles to it that will update with your object as you continue to rotate and spin the car around. If I were to add a, uh, I'm just going to go with a nice and ugly red outer glow here. But now that it's got its outer glow, I can still rotate my car around to a different angle. That's pretty unnatural for this parking lot, but just to show you, the layer style updates with the rotation of the car and it is pretty incredible that it can do this for you and did i mention it's free let's go back a couple of steps here and i'm just going to reduce its size a little bit and get it out of the way because you can add more than one object to your scene i can add multiple instances of the car if i want each time i click on it i'm adding a new car but i want to add one of the other objects, a giant ant. Find the right angle for the ant, and that's by itself not too bad to begin with. And add that into my image. Later on, I can mask out certain areas so it fits a lot better. And I want to go and add this, uh, this BB guy. You can now have this tremendous library of objects to pull together and create entire scenes for yourself. And some of them uh, are pretty incredible in detail as it is, but they're all available to be further tweaked and played with. If you wanted to add textures and lights and shadows of your own, you're not stuck with just throwing in a flat image onto the screen and it's done. You do so much more work with this, especially if you download in the PSD format, which I do plan on getting to in the near future. I, uh, I plan on working on a couple of other tutorial episodes dealing specifically with bringing in some objects from Pixel Squid in PSD format and how to work with all the different layers involved in it. Now it's my opinion, I feel that this, this type of tool 
is an incredible boon to the beginner, to the person who's learning digital art, because the amount of um, detail and the the uh, the pretty high quality stock imagery that you're going to get out of this is something that your average person who's just starting into into digital artwork doesn't have access to. Uh, I would never find myself in a place where I could take a picture of a BMW like this. And I don't have a camera that's great enough to get down and take such a good picture of an ant. But it is a great thing for newbies to use, and they can learn a lot from it when they're able to bring in an object they normally wouldn't have access to, and further edit to learn their craft. But I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you feel something like this is good for a, a new designer and a new artist? Does this help them by giving them objects to work with? Or might it be a hindrance because they're not learning to create their own or take their own pictures? It's kind of up in the air for me. I could go either way, but I want to know what you feel about it. That's my video. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Give me, uh, give me some sort of hint to move forward to the next step in this. I want to, like I said, throw out a couple more tutorials with uh, the things that you do through Pixel Squid here. And I just want to say again, I hope you give this plug in a shot. And it's really cool to use, even if you don't stick with it for a long time. It'll just give you some good ideas and give you some good stock imagery to work with. Hope you had a good time and uh, learned a little bit of something. Give this thing a shot and let me know what you do with it. Let me know what you plan to do with it. And let me know what you hope that they can do to enhance their program. There are a lot of things I could think of to make it better, but I think, uh, I think I'd like to hear a little bit from you first, too.